I think people may get confused between death and resurrection. Kayla and them are here. So ladies wearing their hats. Buddy, don't worry about going in that next song. You do fine. Just, just go where you go and I'll follow. <laughs> Church. Good morning. Good morning. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. Praise God. It's a great day to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. We serve a risen Savior. Amen. 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 
Yeah, welcome to First Baptist Port St. John. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Happy Easter. We are so glad that you're here today, and we do serve a risen Savior. That's what we've gathered together this Sunday morning to celebrate, and I am so glad that you're here with us, and we're excited about what God is doing in the services today and what God is going to to do. It's going to be a great day, and we are so glad that you're here. Uh, If you are a guest who's visiting with us today, uh, if you would do us a favor, in your bulletin, there should be a card that looks something like this. Uh, If you'll take a moment and fill that out for us, it says connection card across the top. That really is our way to connect with you. Uh, It is no accident that you are here today. God has a reason uh, for you to be joining us this Sunday, and we've been praying for you, and and we are so glad that you're here. And if you are a guest who's visiting with us, if you'll fill that card out for us, we hope you feel at home today. We hope you feel welcome today, and you can just place that in the offering plate in a little while when it comes by. It just helps us get to know you a little better and connect with you. I promise we're not going to do unannounced visits to your house or anything like that. It just helps us connect with you, and we would really appreciate that. Um, as far as other, and also regular attenders, uh, let us know if you're, uh, you know, make sure you write your name on that card. Every week, every Sunday, somebody should fill out one of these cards. Um, if you are planning on coming to our Wednesday night meal this Wednesday, on the back where it says Family Feast, write down how many are coming, okay? That way we, we know who's coming. If you know you're gonna bring what you're going to bring, whether it's a dessert or... You know, a pie or something else is bad for Banana you. Banana pudding. Banana pudding. You can write that on there too, what you're planning on bringing so we know. So anyway, every week everybody should fill out that card and turn it in. And we are so glad that you're here. Uh, as far as announcements, um, in your bulletin you'll see that there is an envelope that says Annie Armstrong Easter Offering. Uh, this offering goes to North American Missions. So it's church plants, uh, church starts, uh, new churches all throughout North America, Can- uh, Canada, Mexico, the Caribbean. So if you um, uh, would like to give to that, all of the money received from that fund will go to those missionaries. Um, uh, do we have a video today? Uh, okay. A couple, but they're only like two minutes between the two of them. Okay, so we're going to uh, a quick video uh, to tell you a little bit more about the Annie Armstrong Easter offering. families, our homeless friends, and also women who are experiencing exploitation. There are so many parts to the equation. We look for, you know, creative ways to, you know, meet needs. I'm really passionate about gifting essential products, but it's the importance of leaving the pews and going out and being the light and love of Jesus. We have volunteers within our churches. We're creating, you know, earrings and bracelets to then use those for our street outreach. We can um, just bless um, women that are in strip clubs or on the street. And the goal is just really that the loss will be reached with the love of Christ. When people give to the Annie Armstrong offering, uh, individuals are receiving Christ and realizing their beloved identities as beloved sons and daughters. Your generous support is going towards so many individuals who do not have a relationship with Jesus, helping them realize that they are loved and loved by Christ. Hey, we're Joseph and Kristen Gibbons, and we grew up in Southern Baptist churches. It's where God called us to ministry. And we are now planting Favor City Church in Henderson, Nevada, which is in the greater Las Vegas Valley. And thank you for supporting us in our new church in the city as we're here to make Jesus known. And thank you for continuing to lead your church in giving to the Annie Armstrong Easter offering. We could not do this without you. Hi, my name is Jefferson Hernandez. And I'm Carol Hernandez. We are an ordinary family in the hands of the extraordinary living God who has called us to make Jesus known. We want to thank you for your prayers and your gifts because he has helped us to reach the Hispanic community. Hi, we're the Glimp family from Jacksonville, Florida. We're church planting missionaries here doing all we can to make Jesus known. I just want to say thank you for giving so generously to the Annie Armstrong offering and your prayers that enable us to do the work that we're doing here, the gospel work that's so needed. We just wanted to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
because I dropped it earlier. Ah. There we go. Okay, there it is. All right. All right, so as far as other announcements, uh, in your bulletin there should be an insert that looks like this. We got a, a, several announcements on it. Uh, Vacation Bible School, I know it's just March and we're already talking about Vacation Bible School, but it'll be here uh, before you know it. That's in June. Uh, so if you... Uh, would like to register for Vacation Bible School, you, your kids, your grandkids, your neighbor's kids, whatever, uh, that's how you do that, and uh, that'll be coming up June 24th through the 26th. It's going to be a great time. It's an Australia theme. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun, so uh, make sure you register your kids and plan on being here for that. It's going to be an amazing week, uh, just teaching kids the Bible and games and crafts and music and, and all the stuff that comes with, with Vacation Bible School this summer. So I uh, wanted to announce that. Uh, also, um, we're, you're here Easter Sunday. We want to invite you back. We want you to, to, to come back, to be a part of our church family, especially if you're a guest. Uh, so uh, we hope you feel welcome and hope you feel like you're part of this church family. And to help invite you back, uh, we have a special luau coming up on May 4th. Uh, so there's information in the bulletin about that. You'll hear more about it as we get a little closer. Um, so it's just going to be a fun time of fellowship together as a church. Um, also, uh, next Sunday, we're going to kick off a new sermon series uh, called Truth You Can Trust. Uh, today, we are fi finishing up uh, our study of the Gospel of Luke. We've worked our way to the resurrection. Here we are. We're finishing Ooh. up that. It took us only 65 weeks. Uh, I know some of you are like, oh, we're never finished. We, we got there. We finished. Um, we're going to finish it today. So next week, we're going to study uh, how do we know we can really trust the Bible? Uh, how do we really know that, that God's word really is true? We can build our lives on that. So we're going to start that next Sunday. It's going to be a great time. Last thing I want to mention, uh, actually there's two more things, um, is... Uh, Sunday nights, next Sunday, tonight we're not having any kind of services for Easter, just go enjoy time with your family, but next Sunday, come back at 6 o'clock, uh, we're going to start season 4 of The Chosen, okay? So it's a great uh, video series of the life of Christ told through the disciples' eyes, it's a wonderful, awesome Bible study, uh, and, and just a great, great program, so we want to encourage you to be here next Sunday, 6 o'clock, uh, you don't want to miss it, I promise you, it's awesome stuff, everybody's talking about it, it's really, really good. Uh, last thing I need to say is if you purchased flowers, uh, the Easter lilies, the peace lilies, um, come up here at the end of the service, see Miss Teresa or Miss Barbara, and they'll help pass out uh, the flowers to those who purchased them, okay? So just check in with them before you leave so you can go home with your flowers. All right. There's probably some other things I needed to say. Oh, yeah, Miss Teresa wanted us to say a quick thank you to everybody, and then we will uh, continue our service. <laughs> and good old what's her name over there <laughs> yeah right. well you know Jesus is alive He's alive. That's what we're celebrating today. He, he is risen from the dead. And so you know, we had that memorial service yesterday. But when you trust Jesus, the, the sting of death, the power of the grave is broken. Uh, so we, that's what we celebrate today. This Easter Sunday, Jesus is alive, our risen Savior. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer, and we're going to start our service today. Uh, Lord God, we love you. We thank you for uh, such a beautiful day to gather together. Uh, for all those guests who are visiting with us today, for all our regular attenders, for those watching online, I pray that you are glorified today as we lift you up, as we praise your name, as we sing about how wonderful you are, and we talk about just the, the fact that you are alive. Our Savior is alive, and you have changing lives still today, Lord. We thank you for that, and we celebrate you today. We love you, Lord, in your name. Amen. Amen. Let's all stand as we sing Hosanna this morning. One, two, three, four.
looking for some seats. So Praise God. That's a wonderful announcement to make, but uh, we're going to pack out the house. Woo! Next year we'll need to buy more chairs. So anyway, <laughs> thank you guys. Sorry to interrupt you. No, that's okay. In the center around the throne, there were four living creatures, and they were covered with eyes in front and in the back. The first living creature was like a lion. The second was like an ox. The third looked like a man. The fourth was like a flying eagle. Each of the four living creatures had six wings and was covered with eyes all around, even under its wings. And day and night, they never stopped saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Whenever the living creatures give glory, honor, and thanks to him who sits on the throne and who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him, who lives forever and ever. They lay their crowns before the throne and say, You are worthy, O Lord, our God, to receive glory and honor and power. To you created all things, and by your will they were created and have their being.
thousand generations falling down to worship sing the song of ages to the Lamb and all who have gone before us and all who will believe sing the song of ages to the Lamb your name is the highest your name is the greatest your name stands above them all all thrones and dominions all power and positions your name stands above them all and the angels cry holy all creation cries holy
Stand and sing our doxology, praising God for all He's done. You know, He has blessed us all week long, even in the worst of His life on that cross. He said, Father, forgive Tim, for He doesn't know what He's doing. <laughs> you know, I, I, I believe that with all my heart. He did that for each one of us. No, no questions asked, just wholesale love, giving it all right there on Golgotha. Let's praise God. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. 
dismiss it for Children's Church today, Brother Bill? Yes. All right. Go ahead and take a seat, church. And then when you say I go, ah. Oh. <laughs> I tell you, I've sit, I've sitting in churches that weren't so ah with the oh. <laughs> I sat in wooden benches that you carried part of that bench home with you when you went home. Yeah, free gift. Praise God. For I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You've been so, so good to me. For I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. You've been so, so kind to me. your foe, say your love fought for me. You have been so, so good to me. When I felt no worth, you paid it all for me. You have been so, so kind. No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. Good. 
Thank you, Pastor Tim. We are so glad that you're here again this morning. Uh, happy Resurrection Sunday. Yeah. Jesus is alive. We serve a risen Savior. This is what we celebrate this Sunday, and really every Sunday when we gather together. We talked about that a little bit last week. Uh, every Sunday when we gather together in church, we're celebrating Easter Sunday. Uh, just because the calendar says this is Easter doesn't mean we only celebrate this one day out of the year. We celebrate every time we gather the resurrection of Jesus, the fact that he is alive, he changes lives, he is making a difference, and he is changing the world. Still, 2,000 years later, uh, we, we, we serve a risen Savior, and that's what we celebrate today. Another thing we're celebrating today is a day you thought may never come. We're going to wrap up the Gospel of Luke today. You didn't think we could do it. 65 weeks later, we, we started this Christmas 2022, and here we are uh, wrapping it up on Easter 2024. Uh, we are so glad that you're here. Uh, we basically have taught through the Gospel of Luke all the way from beginning to end. It's one of the largest books in the Bible. That's why it took 65 weeks. Uh, we started with the Christmas story in Luke chapter 1, and now we're wrapping up in Luke chapter 24 with the resurrection story. And really, I think it's fitting that, uh, that we kind of have those two bookends because the meaning of Christmas, we tell, talk about this every Christmas, the real meaning of Christmas is that Jesus, our Savior, came, was born in the manger, lived the life we couldn't live, died the death we deserve, and then what we celebrate today. He rose again victoriously, showing his power over sin and death, and that's why we have Easter. So really, we celebrate those two things together. Uh, because uh, that's what we, uh, we, we, we celebrate, is the risen Savior, Jesus Christ, who conquered death and gives us hope. So, happy Easter, happy Resurrection Sunday. We are so glad you're here. Let's go to the Lord in prayer, and let's see where God takes us today, Luke 24. God, we love you. We thank you again for another day to celebrate you, to share some time together, to read your word, to hear from you. Holy Spirit, I pray you speak to us today. It is no accident that we have gathered together today on this day in this place. You have a message for each and every one of us. So, Lord God, Holy Spirit, I pray you speak to us individually where we are. Some people in here have different burdens and concerns and things that are weighing them down. Lord, I pray today that they get answers. They find deliverance. They find peace that only comes from you. Some others come in here today with different financial concerns and, and burdens, worries about their jobs. Lord, I pray you give them peace today. Others come in with distractions, and Lord, I pray you, you focus in on, on the message you have for them. Whatever it is, Lord God, help us to hear from you. Nobody needs to hear a message from me today, Lord. We want to hear from you. So God, I pray you move me out of the way and that you speak this morning. I pray this in your name. Amen. Alrighty, so I said Luke 24 is where we are today, so if you want to turn there, Luke chapter 24, right there, the last few verses in the Gospel of Luke. Uh, if you don't have a Bible, there may be one in one of the seats in front of you, so feel free to use that, uh, and their words will also be on the screen, or if you need to pull, power up your Bible app, whatever it is, Luke 24 is where we are today, like I said, wrapping up the Gospel of Luke. Last week, we actually talked about the empty tomb. Uh, now we're going to see the first appearance of Jesus after death, alive again, the resurrected Jesus. We'll see him appear to some of his disciples. Uh, this is the first one recorded in the Gospel of Luke, uh, anyway, of the appearances of Jesus. So um, Luke 24 is where we're going to be. If you have uh, that little slip of paper that we're keeping our sermon notes on, um, here's our first note, our first blank for that, uh, and that is, our God is alive and so is our faith. We don't serve a dead God, a dead religion, a dead faith. Jesus is alive, and that means our faith is living. We serve, we worship a living God, okay? Now, some of you might say, well, Jesus isn't my God. Well, I hope by the end of today, you will have changed your mind. In fact, I believe by the end of this message, there may be some who are ready to put their faith in our risen Savior of Jesus Christ the one who gives hope to all who believe. I hope by the end of today, you're ready to trust him. And I believe there are some of you that Christian faith is about to become your faith, that the faith of Jesus is going to become your faith. Uh, so today we celebrate that. Uh, so Luke 24, verse 13 through 14, powerful word of God. Here we go, starting in verse 13. Now the same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus. 
about seven miles from Jerusalem, and they were talking with each other about everything that had happened. Okay, so what's happening here, where we pick up on the story, is there's a couple of disciples. They're not the, the main 12 disciples, but a couple of additional people who were following Jesus, um, and they think it's all over. They're going back to the town of Emmaus, about seven miles west of Jerusalem, and uh, they're disheartened. They're confused. They saw, they heard that Jesus was crucified, and uh, they think it's all over. They may have followed Jesus' ministry. They saw his teachings, him, him healing people. They, they, they thought he was the Messiah. They saw him go through the trials, the, the sham of a trial where they put him on trial and, and he was illegally arrested and sentenced to death. They heard about the crucifixion and the most painful, humiliating way of, of execution possible. And now they think it's over. They were followers of Jesus and uh, they're maybe at one of the lowest points in their life. They expected, like many people, that the Messiah would overthrow the Roman Empire. Right? If you know about history, the Roman Empire was controlling, was occupying Israel at this time. And many people thought the Messiah would come and be a ruling conqueror. That he would overthrow the Romans and set Israel free as a political power. But, that is, but now they've crucified their savior they expected the raging lion of judah and they got a holy lamb of god they felt abandoned they felt misled they felt confused they thought it was all over paul in first corinthians 15 says if only for this life we have hope in christ then we are of all people most pitied what paul is saying there is that if jesus didn't raise from the dead if Jesus didn't die and come back to life three days later, then we of all people are to be most pitied. Uh, King James says, we of all people are most miserable. Our faith is useless if Jesus didn't raise from the dead. And so these disciples, they heard Jesus died. They didn't know he was resurrected yet. So they're going home and they are, as the King James says, most miserable. Spoiler alert, okay? Uh, they're about to meet Jesus, okay? So it doesn't end here. Spoiler alert, Jesus is alive. Uh, he's not dead. He, and they're going to see that Jesus has indeed been risen from the dead. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, again, says it this way. Uh, but Christ has indeed been risen from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. So Jesus is alive, and because Jesus is alive, we too have uh, put our faith in him. And when he changes us, because Jesus is alive, the greatest of our enemies, sin and death, have been conquered. There is no fear of the grave. There is no fear of death for those who believe. Because Jesus is alive, we know we serve a risen, living God, a living faith, not a dead faith like so many other religions. Now, these two men, they don't know that yet. We're getting ahead of ourselves in the story a little bit. They don't know that he's alive. So they're sad, they're bewildered, but their sadness is about to turn to laughter. Just hang on, okay? So we serve a risen, living God, okay? That's the first thing in our notes. The second thing in our notes is that our God, we have a God who joins us as we wander. As we wander, as we are afraid, as we're discouraged, as we're confused, our God meets us where we are. So these two men, they're wandering down the lonely road to Emmaus. They're going home. They're sad. They're confused. But our God meets them and joins them as they're walking that sad and lonely road. He meets them and joins them in their grief. That is our God. We have a God who comes to us when we're hurting and when we're alone and when we're unable to save ourselves. We have a God who meets us on the road of life. Look at the passage, Luke 24, verse 15. As they talked and they discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. They were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, 
what are you discussing together as you walk along? And they stood still, and their faces were downcast. So where are these two men going? They're going to the village of Emmaus, right? Why? Well, I believe it's because they're from Emmaus. They're going home. They're packing it up. Well, they follow Jesus for a while. He's dead. They don't know he's alive. And so they think, well, it's over. They're going home. They're, they're, the Bible says here that they are downcast, that they're saddened, they're carrying a heavy weight. Um, so the, probably what happened is they were going to Jerusalem. They were in Jerusalem celebrating the Passover. That would happen the weekend before. And now they think Jesus has died. And the movement that he led, they believe, has died with him. So they're going home to Emmaus, back to their way of life before. So what does Jesus do? These two men are going home. They think it's all over. They're depressed and downcast and sad. What does Jesus do? He joins them. They're not alone. He walks with them on the road to, to, to where they're going. Uh, that's the last thing these two men expected. They, they saw Jesus die. They knew he had died. Everyone in Jerusalem was talking about how Jesus had been crucified. They did not expect him to come back to life and to be walking down that road with them. That's the last thing they expected. And that's one of the things that we learn from this passage. We have a God who comes looking for us. You see, people are unable to save themselves. We are lost. We are unable to save them ourselves. We cannot fix the mess we have found ourselves in, the mess that we have created. We cannot fix it on our own. But we have a God who comes looking for us and who comes walking down the road with us. We are unable to fix ourselves, but God joins us where we are to clean us up, and to save us. Uh, we are, when we are downcast, when we're depressed, when we're discouraged, we have a God who meets where we are who walks with us and lifts our spirits. We have a God who comes after us to find us. We, we don't find God. We have a God who comes to us and finds us when we are lost. We were saying that song a minute ago where, where he leaves the 99 and he comes searching for the one, searching for us. He finds us. In Genesis 3, if you remember way back at the beginning of the Bible, Adam and Eve, they sin. As soon as they sin, what do they do? They recognize they're, they're sinful, they're naked, they're ashamed, they're embarrassed, they're separated from God. All this happens immediately. So they hide right? They hide themselves from God. As soon as sin enters the world, we want to hide from God because we can't be in the presence of this holy God. We're ashamed of ourselves when we sin, right? What does God do in that story? He comes looking for them. He comes looking for them, right? And that is the God that we have. He comes looking for us. He comes to enter into a relationship with us, in the New Testament, we've talked about it throughout the whole Gospel of Luke, right? That, that Jesus' mission statement was Luke 19.10. The Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Jesus came to seek you and me out and to save us. When we were lost, when we were discouraged, when we were hopeless, we have a God who came to save us, to seek and to save the lost. A God who joins us as we wander through life. This is something that sets Christianity apart from every other religion. You see, religion is man's attempt to try to reach God on their own, right? Every other religion, it's I'm going to try to make God happy. I'm going to try not to make him mad. What do I need to do to appease him? How do I earn favor with God by being good and offering offerings and sacrifices? How do I earn my way to God? That's every other religion. Our faith says, has a God who says, you can't do that on your own. You can't be good enough. So what I'm going to do, what God did, is he came to us. He joined us where we are. And that's the whole point of the gospel. Jesus came to live that life we can't live, to die the death in our place we deserve, and then he rose again victoriously, proving the power once and for all over death. So God moves towards us. He comes to us when we need him. He made the first move. Now, at the end of this service, I'm going to give you an opportunity to respond to that. Jesus came, lived that life, died for you, rose again for you. 
did everything possible to have a relationship with you. Because he loves you. And he actually wants to spend forever with you. He actually loves you. He's done everything possible to initiate that relationship. He came to you. All you have to do is say, yes, Lord. I want a relationship with you. I want to follow you. From now on, I'm following you. At the end of the service, we're going to give you an opportunity to say yes to God. So we have a God who comes to us, meets us as we wander through life. Next thing we see in our notes is that uh, we have a God who opens eyes with the truth. He opens eyes and helps us see the truth. Um, All right, we already read in verse 16 that these disciples uh, did not recognize Jesus. They were, it says actually they were kept from recognizing Jesus. Now they had followed him for a while. They knew who he was. They knew what he looked like. Uh, And Jesus joins them. He's walking with them down this road, but they did not know it was him at first. At first they didn't recognize him. Part of it might be because they were emotional. They were distraught, right? Uh, They were upset. And so because of that, they, they just didn't see that it was Jesus. Um, they, another thing is they weren't expecting to, to meet Jesus. They thought he was dead. They didn't know that he was going to raise from the dead. And even though he had told them, they didn't quite get that. And so they never expected Jesus to be walking there with them. So anyway, so, so Jesus asks, what are you guys talking about, right? And here, verse 18, one of them named Cleopas will answer. And he says, are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? Uh, In some versions it says, are you a stranger in Jerusalem? How do you not know that Jesus had been killed? So they've been following Jesus, but they did not recognize it was him. Why not? Well, again, for for one thing, the resurrected of Jesus was not on their radar. They were not expecting to ever see him again. Secondly, the crucifixion, the crucifixion Jesus underwent was brutal. The Bible says that he was beaten so badly he wasn't even recognizable, that his beard had been plucked hair by hair, right? He was, and so, so as a result, he may have looked a little different, okay? But I think the real reason uh, we, these two disciples didn't recognize Jesus at first is right there in the text. It says, their eyes were kept from seeing them. They didn't recognize Jesus. Their eyes were kept from recognizing him. Now, why would God do that? I think it's so that they could be honest about their feelings. So they could have an honest relationship, an honest conversation about their doubts and their fears, and that Jesus could join them in that conversation. Again, we have a God who meets us where we are. And I think that's part of it. And I think more importantly, I believe that, that Jesus wanted to reveal himself through his word. He wants scripture to reveal who he is. We're going to talk about that again starting next week. How we can trust God's word. How every word in this book is true. And so God reveals himself through his word. And so that's what we're going to see in this passage. They're, they don't know that it's Jesus. How, how do you not know what happened to Jesus? They're all confused. And God is now, Jesus is now going to open scripture and reveal who he is. We're going to see that uh, several times here in this passage. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 7, that we live by faith, not by sight. The Bible says that consequently faith comes from hearing the message, and that message is heard through the word of Christ. So faith comes by hearing, not seeing. Uh, 1 Peter says it this way, Though you have not seen him, you love him, and even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with inexpressible and glorious joy. So we, we don't get to see Jesus today, not physically, right? Uh, so he doesn't appear to us like he does to these disciples. So the Bible says here in Peter, uh, Blessed are we who believe even though we don't see him with our own eyes. So how do we know that Jesus really is God? We don't get to see him. We don't get to, like Thomas, put our, put our fingers in those nail scars. How, how do we believe? Well, the same way these two disciples are going to believe, through the power of God's word. Jesus is going to reveal himself to them through his word. So back to Luke 24, verse 19. They're confused. They don't know how he doesn't know what's going on. Verse 19, what things he asked. 
about Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in, the, in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But when he had hoped that there, but we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all of this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but they did not find his body. They came and they told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it was just as the women had said. They did not see Jesus. And he said to them, How foolish you are and how slow to believe all the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he was going further. But they urged him strongly, stay with us, it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So, they went, so he went in to stay with them. And when he was at the table with them, he took bread he gave thanks. He broke it and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. And they asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us when, we, when he was talking with us on the road, and he opened scriptures to us? How does Jesus decide to reveal himself to these disciples? Through his word right? He reveals that he is the Messiah through his word. He goes through all the prophets explaining how he had fulfilled all of these prophecies. 325 messianic prophecies were written about Jesus a thousand years before he was born, and he's going through explaining how each and every one of those prophecies were fulfilled by him. Then he reveals how Moses revealed him in the, in the law. And he says he explained all the scriptures and how they reveal that Jesus is the Messiah. Verse 32 says they were talking amongst themselves saying, weren't our hearts burning as he opened scriptures and revealed that he was the Messiah? You see, God reveals himself through his word. He has given us all we need to believe in the Bible. That's all we need. That's why the Bible says, blessed are you who don't see him with your eyes, yet still believe, because all we need to believe is right here in God's word. That's all we need. Now, some people say, well, if I could just see him, then I would believe. See, my grandpa, he was from Missouri, right? And Missouri is this, the, the slogan for Missouri is the show me state, right? If you haven't been there, that, that, yeah, 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 you know what we're talking about, right? So uh, the show me state, you got to show me if I'm going to believe, right? And, and he always said that. Uh, he, he, whenever people would talk to him about matters of faith, he would say, I'm from the Missouri, I'm from the show me state. Somebody's got to show me with my own eyes, then I'll believe, you know. You know? But uh, here's what happened in his story. Um, later in life, he said that all of his life, you got to show me, I'll never believe until you show me. One day God did reveal himself to my grandfather. My mom went in to witness to him, and, and he was on his deathbed, and he says, don't worry. God showed himself to me. You see, God reveals himself through his word. That's how he reveals himself. He said, so um, God speaks through his word. That will never change. That is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Every word of God comes true. So, so that is, uh, as we, again, as we, next week we start looking at how we can trust the Bible. Um, that's how he chooses to reveal himself to these disciples, through his word. And that's how he chooses to reveal himself to us. That's how we know Jesus really is God, is by trusting in his word. All right, reading on Luke 24, verse 33. They got up and they returned at once to Jerusalem. And there they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and said, It's true, the Lord has risen and he has appeared to Simon. Then the two told them what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. Okay, so these disciples, they gather with the rest of the disciples, and they can't help but talk about what Jesus has done. He's alive! It's true! He's alive, right? That's how we should be, by the way. We'll get to that in a second. But they just can't, they can't be quiet about it. He's alive, right? He, he really is living. We saw him, right? Verse 36, when they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. And they were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. 
Okay, so I love this. The disciples, they're still talking about this. Oh, he's alive. They're, 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 just, they're so excited. They're like a bunch of little middle school girls. Just, you know, yeah. They're so excited, right? And Jesus just shows up in the room, right? Just appears there with them. And they're startled and they're frightened and they think they're seeing a ghost. But Jesus quickly clears that up. You see, Jesus physically raised from the dead. This is not his spirit that they're seeing. This is not the ghost of Jesus past that they're seeing. This is Jesus alive in the flesh. Verse 20, excuse me, verse 38. He said to them, why are you troubled and why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. When they heard this, when he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. So Jesus went out, out of his way to prove he was not a ghost, that he had physically raised from the dead. There are some churches who teach that Jesus didn't really raise from the dead, that he was just a ghost, that he was just a spiritual resurrection. Uh, that is not true. The Jehovah's Witnesses will, will say that he didn't really raise from the dead. It is not true because he goes out of his way to say, I'm not a ghost. Later, he's going to eat. He's going to say, hey, if you don't believe me, feel the nail holes, right? Just go ahead, do whatever you need. So Jesus gave them what they needed to believe and showed that he would fully raise from the dead, okay? Verse 41, and while they still did not believe it because of the joy and amazement, he asked them, do you have anything here to eat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. And he said to them, this is what I did with you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Catch this, verse 45. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. Here we see it again, right? He says, they still are, oh, we want to believe that you're alive, but we're still struggling with that a little bit. He's eating with them saying, remember how we used to eat like this together? He's proving that he's really raised from the dead. And then it says, what really convinced them he opened their minds and revealed who he was through Scripture. Here we see it again. He opens our eyes to the truth of Scriptures. They saw the nail scars. He's eating with them. He's talking. He's saying, I'm alive. But when he opened their mind to God's Word, they were ready to believe. You are here today because God called you to be here. You are here today because God is speaking to you. You didn't come to church because it's your Easter tradition and every year you go to church on Easter. You came here to this church this Sunday because God has an invitation to you and you're responding to that invitation. God is speaking to you. He's revealing who he is through his word. Will you listen? God is calling you to follow him. Will you respond? He's met you where you are. He's revealing himself. He's calling you into a relationship with him. Will you say yes? Our final point as we're wrapping up is God gives us a mission. So we have a God who opens our eyes. We have a God who meets us where we are. We have a God who loves us and reveals truth, who is alive. And we also, it doesn't end there. It doesn't end with us just believing that God is alive and he's real and he's powerful. All those things are true, but that's not where it ends. He then sends us out on a mission. God gives us a mission. All right, wrapping up now. We're going to do it. We're going to finish the Gospel of Luke. The last few verses, here we go, verse 46. He told them, this is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And the repentance for the forgiveness of sin will be preached in his name to all nations beginning in Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I'm going to send you what the, my father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. And when he had led them out to the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and blessed them. And while he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. Then they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they stayed continually at the temple, praising God. Woo, we finished Luke. We never thought we'd get there. 65 weeks to get to that verse. Woo, all right, here we go. So Luke has a sequel. Let's go, no, let's just go ahead and pick right up. Luke, Acts chapter one. Okay, so for real, Luke, uh, he wrote two parts. Okay, so that was part one. Now Luke, 
I could also wrote the you could call it Luke part two, the sequel. And that is the book of Acts, okay? I do want to read you a verse out of Acts, kind of picking up where we leave off here. Kind of gives a little more detail to this story. Uh, Acts 1, verses 8 through 11. It says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before the very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking up intently to the sky where he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. So here's the message. God gives us a mission. God gives us a mission. What is that mission? To be his witnesses. Once you accept Jesus as your Savior, it doesn't end there, it begins there. That's the start of your eternal life. Now it's our mission to be his witnesses, to tell others about Jesus. The word witness here is the same as the word martyr. We are to share the message of the hope of Jesus Christ with all of this world, even in the face of opposition, even though the world may push back. We share the message. We tell the message of the good news of Jesus to people of all the nations. We share the story of Jesus and how Jesus continues to change lives with everyone who will listen. We go to the ends of the earth to tell others about Jesus. That's why we support missions. Today we had an offering for the Annie Armstrong Easter offering to collect missions or to support missionaries in North America, the United States, Canada, Mexico, the Caribbean. That's what that offering goes to. We believe in that work because this is the mission God gave us. We're planning a, a mission trip to Central America uh, later this year, or early next year. Uh, that we do that not because it's a trip, but because it's an opportunity to share the gospel with those who need it. My family is planning on going to Thailand later this summer. Why? Because not for a, a vacation. We're going to be working every day, Bill. I'm just kidding. <laughs> just picking on you, brother. <laughs> I'm just picking on you. But, no, uh, um, but we're, we're, it's to share the message to meet people who need Jesus and to advance the gospel. This is what we do. We support missions because this is the mission God has given us. If you are a Christian, now is your opportunity to go tell people about Jesus and to share the message of Jesus with a world that desperately needs to hear about him. Here's the good news. He does not send us on that mission alone. In both of those passages, Luke 24 and in Acts chapter 1, he promises the Holy Spirit, that we'll have the Holy Spirit who empower us as we serve him. You are not alone. Again, we have a God who meets us as we go through the, uh, the journey of life, and he doesn't leave us. He is always with us. He'll never leave us. He'll never forsake us. And we have the Holy Spirit who empowers us to do the mission he has called us to do, and he's with us forever. And I love how Acts chapter 1 kind of wraps up the story. The disciples, they watch Jesus go up to heaven. The Bible says they worship him, and they, they're just kind of standing there. I mean, it'd be pretty amazing. To see Jesus just kind of, kind of float up to heaven and hide behind the clouds. And he says he's coming back, so they're kind of like, come on, that was, that was cool, you know. But he doesn't come back. And they're just kind of standing there, they're not sure what to do, confused. So the angels have to show up. And basically what the angels have to say is, Jesus is coming back, so get to work. Get to work. Don't just stand here on the hill looking at the sky. Get to work. Get doing the mission that God has called you to do. Get serving him. This is our mission too. Until Jesus, we see Jesus coming down out of those clouds to gather us home, we keep serving Jesus. We keep telling people about our risen Savior. We keep inviting people to church. We keep doing the mission God has told us to do. That is our calling as Christians. All right. So what do we do with all of this? What do we do? First of all, if you are a Christian, if you are saved, if you've trusted Jesus as your Savior, take heart and know Jesus is alive. And God, God's Holy Spirit is living in you, calling you to be his witnesses. You are to be his witnesses. So if you are a Christian, I'm going to ask you to do something I don't normally ask people to do in church. Get your phone out, okay, and check in on social media. 
check in with your Facebook, your Twitter, or X, I guess it's called now, whatever, your Snapgram, whatever the thing the kids are doing these days, uh, and, and let people know this is your witness. Say, he's alive. I'm in church this morning celebrating my risen Savior. You post about everything else. I know it. Cat pictures and recipe pictures. Why are we not posting about our risen Savior on the platform God has given us today? Let everybody know what you're doing this morning, okay? So go ahead. I'm serious. Go ahead and post that I'm in church this morning. I'm worshiping my risen Savior. Uh, Jesus is alive. If you have questions, give me a call. Direct message me. Whatever you got to do. Everybody needs to know Jesus is alive, okay? So if you are a Christian, let people know what you're doing this morning, that you're following and you're worshiping our risen Savior. And also, if you're a Christian, go beyond social media and build actual relationships with actual people. Make friends with your neighbors and coworkers who don't yet know Jesus. Build a relationship with them. You give, the Bible says, as you go through, the, do what Jesus does here in the, in the road to Emmaus. As you go down the journey of life, talk about Scripture. Talk about what God has done. Share the message of Jesus. That's your mission. So if you're a Christian, that's your job. Be his witnesses every day until the day he calls you home. Now, last thing is the moment I promised. There's some here today, some watching online, who, ha- who need to hear about Jesus. That the Holy Spirit is calling you. Scripture has been explained. You've heard that Jesus is our only hope. He is alive. He paid the penalty for our sins. He is giving you the power to live a successful life, not necessarily financially successful, but actually a life of meaning, a life of significance. That's the life that God has promised. If we will follow him, he will give us that life of purpose. Not only a life of purpose here, but in the hereafter, the promise of heaven. Jesus said, I came to give you life and life abundantly. He wants to fill your life with joy here and purpose and peace. Not that every day will be perfect, not that there'll never be another problem, but you'll have, again, like we talked about, the strength of a God who is there with you walking through the valley of the shadow of death, that you are not alone, never alone again. That is the God we serve. And so if, that, if God is speaking to you, now is the time to say yes. Say, yes, Lord, I want to follow you. I want to follow you, Jesus. I'm giving you my life. I'm turning from my sins, and I'm following you. That's the message of the gospel. If you haven't yet trusted Jesus as your Savior, here's what it is. It's, we're all born, we're going to say this side of the stage represents sin, okay? Not pointing at any people, okay? So, this side of the stage represents sin, okay? So um, we're all born with that natural desire to do what we know we shouldn't do. The way life is. We're all sinners, okay? Becoming a Christian is saying, I'm rejecting the way I used to live, and I'm going a new way, and I'm following Jesus from now on. I'm following Jesus. The Bible, for that turn, the Bible uses the word repent. I'm turning from my sins, and I'm following Jesus. From now on, he's my Lord, he's my Savior, I've given him my life. That's the direction I'm going with my life now. That's what it means to be a Christian turning from my sins, giving my life to Jesus. If you haven't done it, I'm going to invite you to do that today. The Holy Spirit's speaking, and if you kind of feel like this sense, like, okay, I should probably do that. That's not me convincing you to do something. That's the Holy Spirit speaking to you right now, prompting you, saying, yes, that invitation is for you. Trust him today. I'm going to give you that chance now. Let's close our eyes. Let's bow our heads. No one looking around. The, the praise team is going to uh, get up here on the stage, prepare to clo- do our closing song. If you're a Christian here today, in this moment, in these, in these few seconds here, just thank God that he's alive. Thank God that we serve a risen Savior. Take a moment to worship him. For those in this room who need to accept that offer of eternal life, I'm going to speak to you. If you're ready to trust Jesus as your Savior, turn from your sin, selfishness, the way you have been living, and to trust Jesus and to follow him, would you pray this prayer with me? Nothing magic in the words. Just making a vow to God to follow him. If you're ready to do that, Would you pray this prayer with me? Dear Lord, 
I'm sorry for my sins. I turn my back on the selfish way I used to live. And I ask for your forgiveness. I ask for your grace. I ask for a fresh start. Lord God, I believe in you. And I trust you. I believe what we talked about today, that you are risen from the dead. And I give you my life. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for changing me. Thank you for calling me to be your child. In your name I pray. Amen. You can open your eyes if you'd like to. Um, I'm going to ask you to do something. We're, we're going to sing our closing song here in about a minute, and we're going to invite you to respond. Okay? Jesus doesn't call us to follow him secretly. He calls us to follow him publicly. So if, uh, if God has called you to make a decision that's public, it might be joining our church. You know, you, you've been visiting, you're here today, and you go, ah, this, this is not where I'm supposed to be. This, I'm home here. This is where I'm supposed to be. Let's make that official. Let everybody know. This is my church. This is where I'm going to be. For now. You know, okay, cool. Let's do that. Uh, another decision might be you need to be baptized. You know you're a Christian, but you've never been baptized, and we need to, we need to schedule a time to do that. Okay, let's, let's make that commitment. For some, it might be that most important decision we shared just a moment ago. You've given Jesus your life. We want to celebrate that. We want to encourage you. We want to give you materials and resources and, and help you on your journey. You are not alone in following Jesus. You have a whole body of Christ that wants to follow with you and, and help you and encourage you. So, so, but we don't know if we, if we don't know. So if you've trusted Jesus today, we want you to go public with your faith. Okay, so here in about 10 seconds, we're going to stand. We're going to sing our closing song. And it'll be your opportunity to respond. Walk the aisle and respond. I promise you we won't embarrass you. We won't put you on the spot. We won't make you talk in front of everybody. But we want to celebrate what God is doing in your life. You are not alone on their journey in following Jesus. All right? Let's stand and let's respond. can say, Jesus, I come, Jesus, I come, in all my weaknesses, you are my confidence, Jesus, I come, Jesus, I come, I will rise, stand Jesus, I come, Jesus, I come, I will rise, stand redeemed, heaven open over me, to your name, eternally, endless glory, I will bring,
Y'all may be seated. I have a few people I want to introduce to you today. This is exciting. This is good, what God is doing today. Uh, first of all, this is Miss Heather. Uh, so Heather, you know her. She's been here uh, for a while, uh, but she would like to be baptized, not because uh, uh, she needs to be baptized, but because um, as a, a rededication. Uh, she said, I need to get back on track with God and, and kind of just as a commitment to that, as a visual, uh, I f- she feels like led to just be baptized again. And, and, and it's not something uh, we do every week, you know, getting baptized, but it's kind of one of those things where she says, you know, I'll, you're baptized as a child. Uh, but as kind of as a, a recommitment, she would like to be baptized. Amen. So if you celebrate that decision, uh, would you let it be known by saying a big loud amen? Amen. 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 All right. You're going to see that's a kind of a bit of a common theme here today. 
Uh, so Miss Pat, come on up, if you don't mind. And Cindy, you can come up with her. Be her buddy. Oh, so you know Cindy. Okay, all right. <laughs> so, so Pat here also, she's a believer. She's trusted Jesus as her Savior, but she's never been baptized. Um, and uh, uh, she's not a member of a church currently, so she would like to be a part of this church. Right. And so, yeah. So, so, yeah. Hey, look at that. See, everybody's excited. So, uh, so she would like to join our church by baptism and make that commitment to be baptized. I think we already did it, but if you celebrate that decision of her following the Lord in baptism, would you let it be known by saying a big, loud amen? Amen. All right. Awesome. You're going to see this is a, com- a theme for today. Oh, stay up here, Pat, because everybody's going, to inter- everybody's going to come up here and shake your hand and hug your neck. All right. All right. Next up, we have May, Miss May Ireland. S- oh, excuse me. Similar story. Uh, she uh, wants to make a rededication uh, of her life to Jesus. She is a believer, but she, again, wants to get back on track with following Jesus. Uh, and so, so if you celebrate that decision, and by the way, if you say we celebrate it, we also say we're going to pray for her, we're going to encourage her, we're a church family, we're in this together, okay, through the ups and downs of life. So if that's the commitment you're ready to make to Miss May and to these other ladies up here, would you let it be known by saying a big loud amen? Amen. amen. All right. Awesome. Now, we still have one more. If she, uh, so we have one more, I think. This is Miss Rose, okay? Uh, same kind of story, okay? She um, uh, would like to follow the Lord in baptism as well um, and would like to join our church and be a part of what God is doing here in First Baptist Port St. John. Uh, she's neighbors with Henry, but don't hold that against her. Uh, so, <laughs> so anyway, if you uh, would also celebrate her decision to follow the Lord in believer's baptism and to be a part of our church, and you promise to support her and encourage her and her husband, Renee, who's sitting back there. Uh, Renee, you can come up here too, so she doesn't have to stand up here alone. You're welcome to join, to be up here on the stage with or on the platform, the floor, whatever. Come on up. Um, so anyway, if you celebrate that decision, would you let it be known by saying another big, loud amen? Amen. God is so good. God is so good. So, so to all of you, thank you guys for making that decision to follow Jesus and to step out in faith. I know it's kind of hard to walk that aisle in front of all these people. That you, maybe Amen. you don't know them and don't feel comfortable, but thank you for taking that step. And as a church, our, our job is to be part of like a family, to encourage you and to go through the ups and downs of life together. So we want to get to know you. So before you leave, Church family, everybody, come up here after, as soon as we pr- close our prayer and get to know these people. Shake their hand, hug their neck, get, let them know, introduce yourself, let them know who you are. Okay, welcome them to our church. Um, and so we'll, we'll dismiss that way. Oh. Okay, Tim's got something to add. Morning! Happy birthday! The message was wonderful, Pastor, and the praise team, thank you. But I want to thank all you for your prayers. Um, it's going to be another little while. But certainly, they, they, they're trying to get all the stuff figured out. But um, as soon as we get, uh, right now, it's just a, a lack of being able to stand up and walk. And that's mainly why I haven't been able to come to service, because nobody wants to have to pick me up. <laughs> so so uh, thank you all, though, for your cards and things, your, your, your prayers. Just please continue to pray. I miss y'all, but I'm watching every Sunday, and I love y'all. Thank you, Tim. All right, like I said, we'll dismiss here in a moment. Make sure you come by here and shake their hands and introduce yourself to these people. Is there anybody else who feels uh, called? They, they may have not stepped out, but now that you're seeing, you're not the only one who's going to be standing up here. Anybody else would like to share or, or join up or anything? Make a decision to follow Jesus? Okay. If you do want to join the church, if you want to know what it means to follow Jesus, I would love to talk to you about that. So I'll be back there in the foyer as soon as we dismiss here in about a minute. Come say hi. Let's set up a time to talk, okay? We want to answer any questions you may have. Talk about whatever God is doing in your life, okay? So let's, let's do that before you leave, okay? That's where you can find me. Everybody else, make sure you come up here, shake a hand, introduce yourself. That's all right. Let's all stand. We'll dismiss that way. Yes. Oh. Yes. Never too late.
Sit back down. All right. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Baptist aerobics. Okay. <laughs> so this is September. Uh, what's your last name? Oh, September, November. Oh, September, August. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. September, August. I knew it was a month. Okay. Anyway, this is September. Uh, and so she also, uh, same as kind of everybody else up here, uh, wants to rededicate her life. Uh, and and once the uh, she has been baptized, but would also like to join the, the all in the baptism pool, uh, just basically as a, also a rededication and a symbol of that. So uh, if y'all would celebrate with September and her decision to follow, continue to follow Jesus, but to rededicate her life, would you let it be known by saying another big loud amen? amen. amen. Awesome, awesome, very good. All right, man, what a Sunday! All right, Jesus is alive. Uh, yeah, if you don't mind filling that out, our Darlene can. She knows all her information. <laughs> uh, a bigger pool? Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll have to go out to the ocean or something. Anyway, we love you guys. Now we can stand up. We can dismiss. Jesus is alive. Make sure you share that message with other people today. All right? All right. Who's our deacon of the week? All right. Bill's going to close us in prayer. We love y'all. Amen. Amen.